Welcome to Beyond the Signboard, where you get the opportunity to learn all there is to know about your real estate journey from professionals who are passionate about property. I'm Amy Bennett, your host, and I look forward to providing you with education, inspiration, and a behind the scenes look at the world of real estate. All right. Well, welcome, Mr. Grant Smith from Century 21, Grant Smith Property. Thanks for having me, Amy. Oh, I am so excited. This is, we just said it's like catching up um, over the coffee table with a vodka. Um, Instead, we're at the office, but so good to catch up. Um, You are a very dear friend um, to both myself and Daniel. Um, You're an inspiration in our industry, and I'm so excited you said yes to coming along. Absolutely. It's nice to sit around the table as friends and have a chat about uh, what the industry is really like and share some success stories between us as friends. So. Yeah. Look, we um, have always said, and I think what's really important is um, it doesn't sort of matter what um, what business we're in. Um, you know, we always say to each other every time we catch up that there's plenty of business for everyone. Um, you know, we both really believe in enhancing the industry's reputation and providing good service. I think you definitely agree with that. Absolutely. I think there's definitely that misconception that real estate agents all fight and bicker between each other's, but there's some real genuine friendships between real estate agents and you don't even necessarily have to be under the same banner, Mm. but I think those friendships stem from knowing each other and what you're going through because it is a very fascinating industry. It is. And, you know, it's really interesting because, you know, it, it, And this is hence the name beyond the signboard because there's so much that happens, isn't there, in a transaction that you can't share, that it is private, um, confidential, tough. Um, And, you know, we we will sort of delve into um, the depths of real estate. But, yeah, it's certainly a, a commonality that you know what each other are going through. That's exactly right. I think the physical attributes of real estate uh, aren't too extensive with hammering in a signboard, but it's definitely the emotional roller coaster that you follow with all of your clients, your Mm -hmm. colleagues. There's a lot involved mentally in in real estate. And Mm -hmm. I think that's probably something that people don't realise behind the doors or behind the signboard. Yeah, that's so true. And I think, you know, we we sort of um, had a chat off air before, you know, you said, and this is what I love, is that people really is the core focus of what we do. And it's what you love doing and being um, with your clients, being front um, and centre um, at listing presentations during the process, but really helping them. That's exactly right. And I think the, the biggest thing in real estate is people mistake our industry for being a sales business. Mm. And in my opinion of real estate, the salespeople make the worst real estate agents because we're not about selling. Yes. Yes, you've got to be the ability to market yourself, but it's professional negotiators, it's professional marketers, it's managing expectations, it's managing some people's egos, mm. it's managing people's you know financial stress, relationships. Yeah. And I think that all married up and dovetailed together is quite a sensitive and delicate situation to be in. Mm. Our role isn't necessarily to just sell a home, yes, but it's to navigate the emotions that are on that journey with those that are buying and selling. It's so true. And, and I say that so often because, you, you know, there's not many people you'd give the keys to your home to. And I, I always take that as such a trusted um, uh, trusted uh, gift from my clients. But again, like you say, with that comes a lot of responsibility. There's also yeah a lot of emotions to, um, to navigate. My um, background was in community pharmacy and used to say the same thing. You know, it's solution-based selling. So you're certainly selling, but it's helping people with an outcome. So I think that's really important. And there's so many elements, um, you know, to an agent as well. We don't have a a product that we sell, you know, uh, first of all, we have to source that. Um, So there's many different hats we must wear. um, And and I guess that's why, you know, a lot of successful real estate agents have a team. Um, If you have the unique skill set, like I know you do, to be able to do all of those things, um, that's obviously testament to your, always just saying, nearly 25 years um, in the industry. Um, So let's delve back. I um, did say I could read your bio, but I love your story and I'd love you to share it. Um, let's, Let's go way back to 14 year old Grant here on the coast. So we're both uh, sunny coast kids, um, not so much kids now, but grew up here. So let's chat about that uh, 
First foray. Absolutely. It's uh, been a full circle for me. My office is located 80 metres away from my primary school, so I've done the full circle. Um, I've always had a passion for property in general. When I was 14 and in those early teens, it was actually architecture that drew me to property. And I'd jump on my bike and ride around the suburbs and look at any open homes I could. Um, This is pre-telephones, prerealestate.com.au. It was riding down to the local corner shop, picking up the Sunshine Coast daily and circling all of the houses that I wanted to go see. And from that, it developed over years. This is pre-RP data or online information services where I was at the age of 13 or 14 on my bike arriving at open homes to local agents saying, Grant, what do you think this is worth? Because I'd been through more doors than Amazing. the local agents, but they didn't have the technology of course. that was up to date of what had sold. So it's amazing to see just how much technology has evolved and simplified our industry. But yeah. I think the core of real estate is still communication, service and reputation. Mm. And no matter what comes through our doors to make our lives easier, more efficient, more relatable, those core values of what real estate's about have never changed. And I think that's something that's so evident. You know, it's that back to basics, isn't it? It's just, you know, it's being there as a human being. I, you know, I don't want to jump ahead, but I know that is really important for you is all of those extra 1% things and never losing sight of that. And I think without having the journey you have had, which is, you know, like you said, picking up the Sunshine Coast daily, did you have to sort of work out the proximity? Did you work out a run of where you were going? I did, and it it would usually be probably a five-kilometre radius of home on my bike with my helmet, riding around, checking everything out, racing from one to another. Yeah. Um, And then it was when I was 14 on the landline. Yes. Um, Mum had a phone call. I know what that is. (laughs) Mum had a call from our local agent uh, thinking that he was going to complain that I had been riding through their open homes because a few agents, you know, didn't quite know what it, what I was all about. Yeah. Um, but others picked up that it was just simply passion. And one particular agent that mum thought was going to complain actually said, look, you know, your son's welcome at any one of my open homes. Um, he's got knowledge in the area. And fundamentally, it was that business that I started in as a school-based trainee when I was 14 in real estate. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I just find that so fascinating. And what a gift to know at such a young age what you wanted to do. Um, you know, we, we're going to chat a little bit later about what else you would um, have done. Um, we did discover, though, we had one other job that we'd both done as well. So share about your nine months at the plaza. Yes, my nine months at the plaza with Rabbit Photo. Yeah. So, so what did you say? You were a rabbiteer? Ra- a, a, a rabbiteer yes. is what we used to be called. I um, and I did that while I was at high school. It was my first casual job yeah. um, prior to getting into real estate. So a so bit for, of an obsolete job for us oldies now, Amy. <laughs> I was just thinking for those that are listening that, um, you know, it's just funny, isn't it, when people don't even know what a CD player is or a cassette, and we're both still young. But um, so, yeah, Grant was working at a photo processing lab um, where they would actually process the photos. And my first role was in pharmacy, and I used to run the photographics uh, counter. Um, I mentioned to Grant before that we would just put the film roll into an envelope, send it off to Brisbane, and it came back the next day. So I never had the pleasure of getting to see people's photos, but you uh, mentioned that you might have had a chance to. We did. And it's it's so fascinating now to think when you look back, we thought nothing of it at the time, but for the entire public to stand at a glass yeah. window watching people's photos get developed. Oh, it's a bit different to the donuts rolling over at Donut King <laughs> yes. in the window. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Funny. Um, so look, uh, you know, real estate, um, so 14 and then look, at, by 21, is that right, that you'd had your, you've got your own office that you still have now? Like, let's chat to Correct. How you got there. So when I finished my school-based traineeship, um, I joined another large real estate organisation mm-hmm. um, and did a two-year traineeship with that company. And just after my 18th birthday, I joined Dave and Mark Roberts, yes. who owned Century 21 at Budrum. Yes. Um, and essentially, that's where my career's been ever since. So, that's amazing. So did they step out of the business when you were 21? How did that? They did, which all came quite suddenly. Yeah. Um, our goal was always, look, you know, I'd get the first option to purchase the business. 
Uh, I didn't expect that to happen when I was 20, but subsequently we actually settled on the purchase of the business the day before my 21st birthday. That's amazing. And, you know, I know that you hold many awards um, and accolades to your name and rightfully so, but I believe many of them around being the youngest um, person to be able to have um, taken that courageous step. Like, my gosh, I take my hat off to you, even at, you know, I'm nearly 39. I don't know that I could even do it. Um, I think it's just incredible. And you you must have had a lot of good support around you at the time. I've definitely always had good family support mm. um, as well as real estate support as yeah. well. But it is fascinating just at how much the industry has changed. Mm. Um, 20 years ago, which you know is a long time to some people and not long to others, just how I was essentially the youngest mm. agent to be in the industry, the youngest agent in Australia to own a real estate office at the time. Yeah, wow. Um, but also the objection that you had from the industry itself saying mm-hmm. you were simply too young yeah. to be a real estate agent and just in that 20-year period, whether you call it a pioneer of the industry, I but now it. yeah, it's such absolutely. an appealing career. Yeah, to younger generations. Absolutely. So that's been a massive shift. That's incredible. And I think that, you know, that if if I was to talk to anyone um, about you, that's very much what stands out. You know, people uh, are always complimentary um, of your energy, your enthusiasm, your passion, but I think very much being over to uh, overcome obstacles. You've always been really proud to be yourself. Um, you've always had, you know, a beautiful office. Um, and I think you've always, yeah, you've never never differentiated from that. And I think that's really important. Um, but it is difficult. Like I, I can relate, you know, um, you know, I'm not definitely not your, you know, postcard real estate agent either. Um, so yeah, you, you inspire people like myself to just unapologetically be yourself. I think that's so important. I suppose it's what brings us together having a chat on the podcast yeah. today, but most importantly, what brings us together as friends as well Yeah, absolutely. is that you, you need to have a personality and no one should hide behind who they are as mm-hmm. a person. Yeah. You've just got to have an acceptance that not everybody is going to want to do business with everybody else. Correct. But you've just got to find your groove, your people. Yes. And suddenly I always say that there's agents who farm an area and in that area you could have, you know, hundreds of different personalities mm-hmm. that may not all align with you mm-hmm. or you with them and vice versa. Yeah is have a farm demographic. Yeah. That's, Prospect people that yes. are your people yeah, and absolutely. do business with them. Yeah, that's that's such great advice because you're exactly right. I, I think that's, you know, what I've always, your vibe attracts your tribe. Um, and I think also, you know, we, we speak a lot at length. We're both really fortunate to have a very strong referral-based business. And I think that, you know, that probably um, would be something that people that aren't from the Sunshine Coast probably don't understand is that our community is very tight-knit. Um, you know, we, you know, if you're not good at what you do, you found out, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, reputation or you're, you do the wrong thing, you know, it's pretty quick um, and apparent. And I think that it stands testament to, you know, 25, uh, nearly 25 years that you, you know, just continue to give good service to people. Um, you know, we, we can't all be liked by everyone, but we don't like everybody as well. So I think it's really important, yeah, that we, um, yeah, find an area. You're right. You know, just have your referral based and then your core area. Um, obviously, your office is based in Budrum, so you've got um, you know a really long standing um, career there. What what other areas have you enjoyed selling over the years? Budrum's not, even though it's a top performing suburb in Queensland, it wasn't a choice for okay. me to sell in Budrum. Okay. I grew up in Budrum. I went to school at Budra Mountain Primary. I was Mountain Creek State High School. So my career just simply evolved mm. where I was fortunate enough to grow up as a family. Yeah, amazing. Um, when you talk about sort of the support behind you, mm. I've got my mum in yes. my business. Oh, she's we been, love your mum. She's just an angel. She's amazing and yeah. she looks after all of our business management, me, yes. the office. <laughs> and I think that's probably one of the crux of just keeping – such a strong reputation is we aren't, even though we're a franchise yes. business, yeah. we're very much a family owned and operated business on the inside. Mm. Um, we've always had quite tight staff retention. So it's not a circulation of people coming and going through the door, but also 
with my name on the door, so to speak, mm. is you've got that peace of mind of security. I've been there for 25 years and I'll be there for another 25. I know, there's no is, getting rid of us, You've is got there? that consistency and I think that's what people look for too in an agent. You don't want someone that's chopping and changing constantly or where are they popping mm. up next. That's really good. Yeah, really good thought process. And and look, tell us about your team. We, you know, we've delved a, a little bit into that. But, um, you know, like, like you and I said off air, you know, um, Teams grow and they swell and they um, reduce and you've got to find that magic, um, I guess, that magic mix, don't you? Um, you've got a great, you know, team um, but also flexibility, um, you know, we'll, we'll delve about that. So let's chat about your team. Yes, yeah, so I think ha- having a team is probably your most vital part in success other than your own brand and your own persona. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, it's important to have the right people behind you because it's easy to get the business based on your name But are people going to experience that same level of service and even matching personalities? Because Mm. if someone likes you for who you are, and we're both in the same boat, neither of us are dull, boring people, (laughs) that you can't have someone go, wow, we love your energy. And now I'm dealing with someone who's just sitting in the corner. Correct. So exactly. Having yeah. the right team is so important. Having people that are on a similar wavelength to you, yes. similar drives, similar goals, mm. and engage with people certainly on a similar level. Correct. Everyone's unique, but yeah. I think you've just really got to have the right people that will gel with first and foremost you yes. as an agent, yeah. and secondly everyone that you're dealing with within your business. Yeah, absolutely. And do you think that's a taught skill or that's just something that naturally, that it's just somebody's personality type? I think personality is a natural skill. It's Mm. unfortunate that you you can't train someone to have a good personality. We're definitely not. Uh, Neither of us are in the corner people, are we? No, definitely not. But I don't believe there is anything in real estate that if you've got the right personality, like you said, the right vibe, the right attraction, there is nothing in real estate that can't be taught if you are a genuine human being out with good principles doing the right thing. Yeah. along your journey. Yeah. And and I think um, that's so true. And, and we both um, have had a really extensive apprenticeship. And let's chat about that because there is such a, um, a, such a thought process that it is quick and easy. So you had, you know, really, we sort of both had about five years of really watching good agents. Um, I mean, probably you didn't have the exposure to, you know, things that we do now with podcasts and YouTube and everything like that. Where did you gain your inspiration from? I think a a lot of it back then was no, no different to business. It was a lot of it was face to face. I've never been afraid to talk to someone about, hey, where have you got to? How have you done it? What yes. have you experienced exactly like you and I are doing now? Yeah, amazing. Um, a lot more face to face conferencing back then. Yeah. Um, but also just observing. And I think the beauty of real estate is not every lesson in real estate is what you should do. There's a lot of lessons in what you shouldn't do. So true. And I think just watching and going, hey, that's, you know, that's something I like. I I like how Mm. that was presented to a client or how an Mm. agent said that Mm. and other things that you think, well, gee, that didn't quite fly. So that's not how I want to operate as an agent. And as you said, we've both had five years to be able to understand that. And yeah, I think- and curate your own um, process, I think, you know, and you're always learning. I mean, I picked up something amazing from my colleague Bree on Saturday and I just sort of reflected yesterday and just sort of said, look, can you chat me through your thought process and why you did that? And it was just so inspiring to learn. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? You, we, we joked and said, you know, you think you know everything and then, you know, there's a new scenario and no two homes are the same, no two clients are the same. Um, you know, you, you would have certainly seen seen a lot of different um, scenarios, but yeah, always something new to learn. There has been. And I think over the years, I've been fortunate in 25 years of real estate that three months after we purchased our business and settled, they announced the GFC. Yeah. So in essence, we've had that opportunity to really see all markets. We had that initial GFC in Mm -hmm. 07, Mm -hmm. which did probably follow through for a good couple of years before we saw traction again. And mm-hmm. then there's been that sort of roller coaster over those journeys. And when people, as we know, over COVID, we did experience, you know, price inflation that yeah. none of us predicted. And if even you and I were having a drink during COVID, we would have said prices would have crashed. Yeah. And look, you would have put your money on it. That's exactly right. So yeah. just, I th- just I think a bizarre time, wasn't it? It was. And that's probably the most unique 
environment I've seen in any market. Yeah, um, it absolutely. was it, it wasn't considered a normal real estate market. Correct. Um, and that's that's a concern, like not a concern, mm. but certainly there's agents that have come into the industry over mm. the past three years mm. that have come in on complete false pretenses because, yes, yeah. we've been able to say we've had a good couple of years, but there were 22 before that Correct. where That's it was right. a genuine real estate market where you were working hard yeah. to get a deal together for your clients. Absolutely. And multiple times, you know, but deals didn't necessarily just go through the first time. Um, you know, I've certainly learned that from, you know, many people that were in, um, you know, actually growing up, my stepfather was an agent in a commission only um, world back in 1996. And I remember how tough it was, you know, there, there was months there where there was, you know, no, no income coming in. So I'm certainly not, um, uh, I, I know that I'm fortunate to have entered the industry in the time that I have, um, but I have had those years as well to sort of observe. Do you, I mean, it's probably the same across, you know, the whole industry, but certainly here on the coast, you saw an inflation of people joining the industry during that sort of COVID gold, gold mining time. Absolutely. And I think that comes back to reputation during mm. COVID. Everyone knew someone in real estate, um, but I'm sure you're experiencing it too now, particularly rolling into this year, mm. is clients and sellers are focusing back now more so onto who's actually going to get me the best result here. Correct. And not necessarily just going with the best friend that's been in real estate for 12, 18 months. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a really it's a really interesting thing, isn't it? Because you're so right. I mean, you know, even ourselves, you know, we've got multiple friends and, and people we know that have joined the industry. But until someone's been in, you know, tough market conditions, you know, there's a resilience, isn't there, that's, um, that's born through, you know, those years. And also just being aware that, I mean, I, I very much am aware that the deal's not done until the deal's done, you know, and, you know, there are excitement levels. We said, you know, the, the wholesale journey really is a roller coaster, and there's highs and lows during it. Um, but I, I think that's probably something that I've learned from people that have really, um, you know, done the, the years in the industry is that, you know, just always be aware and have a plan B, C, D, E, F, maybe all the way to Z. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the... The beauty in, in real estate and probably part of why we love it yeah. is that no day is ever the same. You don't know who you're going to meet. You don't know what results going to come across your table. Yeah. Or more importantly, which I suppose probably doesn't get talked about often, is what fire you need to put out totally. in a day. Yeah. And it can be an absolute bomb, whether it come to a building and pest or trying yeah. to resolute finance clauses. And these are all the things that come across our desk on a daily basis. And I don't think I've ever seen a post from any real estate agent on social media yeah. about a photo of them putting together a deal that's about to fall over on a building and pest. Uh, correct. That's exactly right. <laughs> there's lots yeah. of champagne and bubbles, and that's but right. there's, uh, it's not seen. Uh, no, that's exactly right. And, and I think, you know, uh, I think, yeah, we were f like fearful. I can't even say the word failure. You know, like that's so me, a recovering perfectionist. Um, but, you know, I think there is such a perception, isn't there? That, and, you know, we're all smart enough to know that social media is the highlights real. But I guess that's why I was so drawn to doing this podcast was, you know, a conversation where somebody had said, look, you, you make it look too easy as real estate agents. Like, you know, we're all smiling and, you know, I'm sure we don't want to share photos of, you know, the, the bloody tough times, but they are there and they're there every day. Um, and you're right, priori prioritization is really important. Um, that's been a really good lesson for me. So do the things that you can do and get them done. So you've got time available because like you say, a phone call comes, um, you know, an email comes and your whole world changes. And that might be an opportunity to list something. It may be a deal that, you know, hasn't, hasn't um, gone to plan, but equally so life as well. You know, I think that's something, um, you know, that we so often forget as well. And that's why you and I have really strong team behind us, both personally and professionally, um, because, you know, no no moment is um, is guaranteed and, you know, life does happen. And, you know, unfortunately, as real estate agents, our, our clients do want us there 24-7, but um, we do need breaks and you and I both like a holiday or two. We do. And I think it's, <laughs> it is so important to create that healthy work-life balance yeah. and, I think I'm still refining that yeah, after 24 years. Is that because of the love and passion you have for your role? There is, and I think that to care, 
you don't want to let anyone down. Yeah. Um, but it's a very fine line of not letting anyone down, but most importantly, not letting yourself down totally. or letting yourself get into a headspace mm. where you're not best representing yourself yeah. as a person. Yeah. So I think it's so vital, whether it be mini or longer, yeah. you need to have those moments where you can go, you know what? It is okay for me to just go and recharge my batteries yeah. and come back full. Absolutely. Oh, look, you're, pre- you're preaching to the converted, and, and it's a, it's something that you know both of our husbands are always on us, aren't they? To to um to you know spend some time with them, but also to look after ourselves, and that comes from a place of love. So, um, has that been? That's obviously been a learnt. Um, you know, has there been times where you've gone long stretches without, you know, uh, looking after yourself? Admittedly, I it's more the guilt of going away. Yeah. But yeah, I, I I've always been one to make sure that you have pre-booked yeah, good. you events. Yes. Which, you know, whether it be a small mini vacation, yeah, you know, we're going away for two, three nights. Yes. Or whether we're jumping on a plane and going away for two weeks, six weeks, yeah, you've got to have those things pre-lodged into your calendar. And I always like to have a minimum six months yeah, in perfect. advance of going, yeah. all right, well, that's that's when I'm going, that's where I'm going. And I think that does keep your mind focused on why ultimately you're doing it for yourself. Like, yes, Absolutely. we are working for people, yeah, but it's, I think, the, the, the hardest thing to do in real estate that's the most vital is maintain your own self worth and mental health. Yeah, look, I uh, I hear you. I think it's so important. Um, you know, it, it it's a t- it's a challenging industry. There's no doubt about it. And you know, uh, like I said, the um, you know resilience and like you said, the strength that you need and to best represent. You know, it's really hard to go from zero percent to you know hundred percent. People want us at one hundred and ten percent. So it is exhausting. So it's important. Um, and I think that uh, you know, in a positive way, we love that flexibility of our roles. You know, that we can get together. Um, you know, on a Wednesday morning and have a catch up. Um, you know, now and we certainly put in enough hours the rest of the week as well. Um, I think that's really important. Um, but definitely having that support as well. And you mentioned as well um, off air that you also, you have the conversation with your clients, you know, you let them know and and your clients very much have an understanding um, of what they're going to get with you. And then it's emulated with your team as well. And I think that's important is it's, as you said before, it's your vibe that attracts your tribe. And I think that comes back to the people that you do business with as well. Yes. Um, I've always maintained, and I I say to my clients when I'm listing a property, Mm. is I will never work for you, but you are engaging me to work with you as a team to work together to get you the best result possible for your home. Yeah, I love that. Um, I think it's an industry where it is relationship-based, and if we're going to say that it's relationship-based, then it can't be employment-based either. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, and it also is, uh, I guess, testament to the longevity that you have with clients. You know, I, I know you repeat business is huge for you and referrals, um, and and that's there's no greater compliment, is there, that – you know, somebody's been through such a huge process and undertaking, they've been really happy with the result and then happy to either engage you again or refer you, um, uh, which is probably the reason you are voted the number one real estate agent um, on the coast uh, through the Sunshine Coast Daily recently, um, which was super exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. It was certainly a surprise because I think that was probably as an agent one thing that humbled me the most is we all know that with social media and particularly news outlets, yeah, I did have some concern about any trolling. Yeah. Um, but to even my own surprise, there was nothing but praise from people I'd sold for, people that had purchased, in obviously industry. friends and family that are always your biggest cheer squad yeah, in yeah, the yeah. background. <laughs> but I think that's probably what humbled me most is that – there was nothing negative. No, and I think it was awesome. And like I said, the in industry support and respect for you is immense. And that was really awesome. And I know I private messaged you to congratulate you and, and you did share that you were sort of worried. And look, I don't know a social media post that doesn't have something, you know, the grass is green. No, it's blue. So look, it is a testament to you. Um, and you know, the nearly 25 years is just phenomenal. Um, and to still have the passion and energy for you. Um, what do you love about your role? I think the most important thing that that I love is it's always been the diversity of the people that you meet, the friendships that you make, the relationships, the whole process of, you know, real estate is not just property, it's people as well. Yes. And I think we're very fortunate that 
both of us are quite extroverted and social and that's a lot of real estate. Like, yes, there's the hard work behind mm. closed doors, the phone calls, the typing out, you know, new scripts, things like that. Yeah. But ultimately we do have that flexibility to go, you, are, you know what, I need to take five and I'm going to pop down to the cafe and have a coffee with a friend. Yes. And ultimately, yes, it's networking, mm. but it just gives that flexibility Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, when you were just saying then about being extroverted and um, like I would imagine you were a pioneer of, you know, being on camera as well. I've seen some really cool old videos of you and, um, and you know, that would have been cutting edge at the time. Like what, what did a video look like, you know, 15 years ago? I think the, the interesting part of when I started in real estate is we were right on the cusp of every agent and news media outlet was pushing paper advertising. Yeah. And back then it was, look, we still need your four full-page ads in the paper at $4,000 a week when homes were only worth an average of $500,000 and you're asking for anywhere between five and $20,000 in marketing. Great insight. To then going, well, we need to spend all that money in the paper and mm-hmm. we should probably put your house on the internet. Like yes. maybe we just put a little feeler in that water. This thing that's just coming. This thing, yeah, yeah, it'll never take off. It'll yeah. never take off. No one's ever going to look on the internet. Oh, far out. And it was one of the divisive things that I did and we, we can both agree mm. that, you know, through our entire careers and lives, Ray White's been very mm. focused on print media and having yeah. the biggest exposure to be at the front of the paper. Yeah. And there was never an opportunity, but I saw the opportunity when I was 18, 19, that I, I, as Grant Smith, was never going to have 14, 15, 16 pages of ads in the paper. At $5,000 a page. But we could offer an alternative. Mm. And we were the first adopters in Queensland and almost used as a guinea pig with realestate.com mm-hmm. yeah. that we virtually pulled print media all together. Mm-hmm. And even back then, in day one, Back in 2008-ish yes. when realestate.com came out. Yeah. Ironically, the prices today are the same as what they were back then. Yeah, it's amazing. But we were able to it? offer an alternative. Mm-hmm. So there was one stage there in Budrum where every agent was scratching their heads as people started looking at this thing called the internet mm. on their computers. Yeah, of course. That you'd jump online in Budrum mm-hmm. and the first two pages were all our listings yeah. because we went to that premium listing. And you always have, haven't you? I know you. I know that you've always understood the value for that. And, and you know, we're the same as well. And you, you can't muck around with things like that. You've got to be, you've got to feel fish where the fish are, don't you? And you've got to be able to provide the opportunity for people that aren't just physically at the that area. Correct. And I think that's been, you know, probably one of the greatest value adds to our mm. our industry is when, when I first started, like I said, you'd be asking for the, the rule of thumb when I started was the marketing had to be 1% of the value of the property. Yeah. And that so on a five hundred thousand dollar home, mm-hmm. you were expected to be asking for five thousand dollars in marketing. Was that paid up front? Was there a? It was always paid up front. Yeah, it's a big commitment. cash check or credit. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. And now there's so many other alternatives yeah. for for people selling their homes. Yeah, but of course. You'd probably agree that even on a two million dollar property now, you would be hard pressed yeah. spending five thousand dollars of someone's money yeah. to give them an awesome campaign. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, it's, look, it's an interesting thing with the evolution of what's possible um, with marketing, and and I think that's a probably a really good insight as well as you know if we signed up to everything that was offered, and you know, uh, prop tech is huge. Obviously, there's the latest, greatest, and everything. But I think you kind of came back to at the core, it's ultimately you just do the basics right. You know, real estate is very much an A to Z process. Um, there's certainly tools to help us, um, you know, obviously getting time back. That is the most, you know, precious um, thing that we all have. But yeah, very much not getting caught in the fluffy stuff and just really what is the key, um, the key drivers to getting your client the best result. Correct. Mm-hmm. And I think in, in your degree, social media can be a double-edged sword for a lot of people in a lot mm-hmm. of industries. Just because you're on there and you're being seen, is it still necessarily the best reflection of your brand? Mm, yeah. um, I think the the reputation far outweighs the views, and it you know it is. And I think that's not isolated to real estate. Correct. I think in general mm. that you've got to have that little bit of a fear of just because eyes are looking at it and seeing it with that next generation that's probably a couple below us yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is just because they're seeing it 
doesn't mean that it's a positive reflection on your business. Yeah, that's right. And I think, that, look, there's just so much, isn't there, to unpack with social media marketing. And I, I think ultimately it comes down to really identifying who is your audience. Um, you know, I, I don't make any secret that my social media um, is very much skewed and um, is, you know, my audience is very much my referral network. Um, so have I sold properties um, off social media? Absolutely. Is that my core objective? Absolutely not. So I think, you know, it's that's probably where I see people are really muddying the waters with what their messaging is. Correct. Um, so it's not it's not a platform for just listed, just sold. Certainly, you know, they're important, um, but ultimately it's about an insight and, again, beyond the signboard, having a look at who are you as a person? Why would I give you the keys to my home? You know, what skills do you have that stands you, you know, well above the rest? And I think with social media, again, it's not coming back to the cell, but you're very similar mm. in how we both operate on our platforms. Yeah. And I think it's important to give people a story and that's what you've done to create the success of that buyer or that seller. Correct. It's not I did, I Mm. got. You know, I think data and analytics are probably for us in the industry in the background. Yeah, correct. I don't think that needs to be portrayed to buyers and sellers necessarily as a a litmus to your success, but the emotional journey and positivity that you created in the outcome is far more important. I think that's so true. And I think, you know, probably that's uh, something that's a given. And I think, you know, you and I both would agree with that, you know, and we hear this so often, you know, you wouldn't ask a surgeon their credentials or anything like that. And, um, you know, I know Tom Panos, you know, famously sort of says, you know, what other industry do you say we've sold this many this month and everything like that. So, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, storytelling is essential to what we do. Um, So uh, hence why we're doing the podcast to be able to share our stories and um, you know, give give that insight and your people can get a bit of a glimpse of who we are as people as well. Um, if, uh, I love this question, but if you weren't in real estate, it's hard to fathom, you know, obviously you couldn't be a rabbiteer anymore. <laughs> no, I think my days of developing photos oh. are probably a little bit uh, past us in history now. Yeah, you took the better career choice. <laughs> um, what would you do if it wasn't uh, what you're doing now? I've always loved design, people mm. and property, and I just have never seen myself outside those realms. Um, as you know, and we've had the help of your wonderful husband, Daniel, we've done a lot of renovations yeah. and projects. And I love that hands-on aspect, particularly being in the industry. Mm-hmm. Like we are across the board of, you know, what it does cost to renovate a property. Yeah, and absolutely. Even some of the smallest jobs that you think that need to be done, just the development of costs and having a an understanding of that, and we absolutely love that aspect of real estate, developing, yeah. renovating. Yeah. Well, you've done some amazing um, makeovers as well, haven't you? And I think that, you know, there's no greater gift to a property than being able to see what's possible and transforming it. Um, you know, even in your own home, you know, it's it's there's nothing better, is there? I mean, we both have very pink aspects of our house. We do. We share that in common. (laughs) (laughs) Which is, which is awesome. And um, look, your home really is your sanctuary. Um, You have your beautiful husband, Jeff, and your two puppy dogs at home. We do. And I think that's very much where home is where the heart is Mm. for the better part of 15 years. We were buying, selling, renovating every couple of years. And I think now that we're married, I think we've really sort of found our place where we're just happy. And that's you l- Home is where the heart is. It is. And, you know, you're you're the same. You've got that sanctuary where it's your space. And um, and I'd love to see you enjoy that and share. Um, I wanted to ask you um, what myth or misconception uh, or the greatest myth or misconception you believe about our industry. I think the, the greatest myth and misconception is the reality of it. Mm. And that is that there is such a push and look, you know, stepping slightly aside, I, you know, I disagree with the REIQ mm. promoting that you can be a real estate agent in five days. That's our governing body saying you two can have a license and run around after five days with us on a course that you can't fail. Yeah. But it's interesting that there's not been enough focus to the consumer mm-hmm. that absolutely anybody on this planet can be a real estate agent and cannot fail but that the value isn't put on the experiences of the years within the industry and what that individual's done themselves to further their career, enhance their career. And as you would know, we were talking about it just off air, is Mm. we've come back to a market where everything doesn't just slide across your desk and slide back into the sold section. (laughs) There are things that you need to navigate in between. And 
some of those conversations over a building and pest renegotiation, mm-hmm. an mm-hmm. extension of a finance clause, mm. those things take, you know, sometimes a, a little bit of a harder conversation, but it's having the tools, the knowledge and those years of experience mm-hmm. to be able to navigate people through it to make sure that they make their right decisions. And a, an agent who's only been in the industry for 12 months and not been confronted with those challenges... yeah may not have the tools in their toolbox to be able to navigate you through that. Correct. Confidently as well. I think that's, you know, when you're dealing with two different, uh, you know, personalities, two parties, um, you know, bringing that together, you know, it is a really skillful dance, isn't it? I think that's that's a really good, um, you know, myth. And, and I think that maybe people aren't aware that it is it can be as simple as doing a course and, you know, that's it, you've got your certificate and you're off. Um, it is quite terrifying. And, and there probably, I would suggest, be not many other industries that are like that. Um, so I think that's a really good, um, you know, warning sign or, or perhaps something for people to be diligent. And, you know, there's there's no surprises that our industry is not highly regarded, um, of which we, you know, continue to try and, um, you know, uh, increase people's, you know, uh, understanding of what we do different. Um, and we can't be held responsible for everybody. You know, obviously we play a big part in what we do ourselves. Uh, but I definitely think, you know, that that ability for people to be able to access and, and hit the ground running, hit the phones, have somebody's keys, it's just a very careful decision that the property owner really needs to make. That's exactly right. And I think for the vast majority, most people are quite educated in their decisions mm-hmm. of an agent, but I don't think I could strengthen enough the value of doing your research on years in the industry. Mm-hmm. How many properties has that agent sold? Take a glance like at their social media presence. Take yeah. a glance at their profiles of what's sold. Mm-hmm. Read legitimate reviews and do that little bit of background research because you're going to, as a seller, yes. get a far better understanding of what others are saying, doing, and how your property is going to look based on you selecting that agent to be within their portfolio of properties for sale. Absolutely. And we, you know, digital interview is so important and and that's a huge evolution. You know, we were just chatting about that off air about, you know, um, you know, if you're going up against four other agents, you know, it's it's kind of an antiquated thing that someone would say, look, you know, Grant, we've got you at 10, we've got Amy at 11, we've got X at 12 and, you you know, you have that awkward where you're leaving as they're coming in. Most people are doing their own research online and so I think that's a really vital step, like you said, that making sure that your information's accurate. Um, I know you You've always been really renowned for having a huge volume of testimonials online. Um, you can't fake those. You know, they are genuine, you know, buyers and sellers that you've transacted with. And there's no greater um, gift, you know, of good service is somebody, you know, thanking you and, and taking the time to articulate that process. So you can't get away from that. You know, if you're a brand new agent and you've got nothing in the sold section, nothing in the for sale section, no reviews. Like it's bloody tough, isn't it, to get from there to, you know, a listing. It is, and I think that's so vital is taking into consideration a lot of those reviews. Mm. Um, And we always laugh about it saying in real estate, if you took an agent from every single office, I am yet in our community of the Sunshine Coast to meet the number two agent on the yeah. Sunshine Coast because they're all number one. That's right. Absolutely. That's it. What are those? Never let the truth get in the yeah. way of a good story. Hey, we're all number one in somebody's eyes. Exactly. I love there's an agent that has a billboard on the coast that says like number one agent and then in brackets buy my kids or something yes, like that. Yes, yes. Oh, look, but you definitely have, you know, like I, I – couldn't count how many times you've been number one at many different things. Um, but as I say, first and foremost, as a great person, and, and that's why, you know, I was so excited for you to come through. Um, so let's put real estate aside and get to know you a little bit more. Um, we would love to know your dream holiday destination. I think that travel's always been a passion of mine. Yes. So there's always another dream and something else to add onto the bucket list. Yep. But we've always enjoyed our travels in the States. Yeah. Um, Did you say 11 times in? 11 times in 11 years. Yeah, that's epic. Um, I'm sure a lot of you would know, but some may not. Yeah. Um, my draw card was always to Las Vegas to see Celine Dion. Amazing. So yeah. that was always my draw card to the States. How many times have you seen her? 40. 40? I didn't 40 know that. 40 times, yes. Hey, nearly one for every year. And you've had the opportunity to meet her? I did. I met Celine for yeah. my 30th birthday. Amazing. Favourite song? 
would definitely be well. If it came to karaoke, it would yes. be. It's all coming back to me now. Oh, but otherwise, beautiful. it's the power of love. Yes, and you know, um, I've never told you this, but that was my first album that I ever bought. Was a Celine. Oh Dion. my goodness! Was it the Because You Loved Me? Or well, you'd know what album? Falling into You. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it was my first uh, CD. Um, and gosh, I only had one, so I just had that on rotation. Um, yeah, no, I knew I knew that, but I didn't know 40 times. Has she been yeah. to Australia? She has, yes. I've yeah. seen her a couple of times in Australia as awesome. well. Awesome. Um, I guess that's probably the nature of who we are as people, Amy. We're very passionate about what we love. We love, <laughs> yes. Well, I'm very much known to go halfway across the world for a music festival as well. Um, you enjoy Europe as well? We do. Europe's always been one of our favourite places to travel. Yeah. Um, I suppose rather than dream destination in the future it would be almost dream destination in the past we were fortunate enough to get married in Lake Como last year amazing um, which was a beautiful setting a couple of doors up from Uncle George's house I love that I asked Uh, that already yeah but that would have been my dream yes destination that was always my goal before Jeff and I even met was to get married in Lake Como arrive by the Reva boat yes we painted our own fairy tale that day well you deserve it and you know you are a beautiful you know match made in heaven and um, gosh we couldn't do this without an incredible support and like you said you know with your beautiful mum and now Jeff by your side so obviously uh, that was I was going to ask what your best day of your life is I think you've already (laughs) told us We've summed that up, I think. It was definitely my wedding. But every day you've got to enjoy and laugh. Absolutely. You know, there's always the memories that remind you of how good our life is. Yeah. And there's always those future memories Mm -hmm. that keep pushing you to keep being the best version of yourself because you and I both have such amazing memories still to create. Yeah, absolutely. And and what a gift in an industry that just keeps giving back um, and, you know, will continue to evolve and change. And who knows, you know, us in 20 years what that looks like and and how much the industry will change. That's really exciting. But I think at the core, like you said, you know, when uh, when people's your focus, doing the right thing, um, what's your favourite meal and drink to enjoy? I've always been a sucker for Italian, yep. I think. You know, a nice Italian meal with a glass of red wine. Yeah, perfect To me, food is, it's, it's relationship-based. Mm. Um, I think a, a, a beautiful meal with someone that you love, close friends, it doesn't matter what you're having, but it's that, that moment in quality time of actually sitting down to smell the roses, so to speak, yeah, and enjoy virtually. a meal with yeah. friends and family. Yeah, it's a real connection point, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And so you, I know you do love to host at home as well. Um, you know, we've been fortunate to have beautiful dinners at your, um, at your place. Um, Favourite restaurant on the coast? There's just so many on the Sunshine Coast. We sort of bounce between, um, I think, well, Market Bistro is always a go-to. Yes. We're there for dinner this evening. Beautiful. Um, but there's so many local businesses that we support yeah. on a regular basis, right down to, you know, great coffee, yes. shout out to North awesome. Coffee and North Budrum. Yes, they're um, your faves. They're fantastic. Yeah, awesome. But I think that's something that, you know, we're always very mindful of. We do try to support local when we come to all mm. of our like we, we use our local butcher, yes. we use our local Fenwick's, the grocer. Yeah. Um, we try and buy all of our produce and even if it comes to a shop, you know, we both far prefer to go to, say, a Ross's IGA, White's IGA. Yeah, we love Ross. Um, because I think that's so important in a community that mm-hmm. supports us. Absolutely. Is to make our little world on the Sunshine Coast go round, we need to be supporting each other and that can be the smallest of things. Absolutely. And I think, you know, we, uh, we're a real mecca of small business here um, and I know that from my time with the Chamber of Commerce um, community is so important to both you and I um, yeah, and giving back to the community um, I was literally having a look on your bio with all of the amazing organisations you've supported and let's let's chat about that a bit but you know it's funny I just introduced you to our team and they remember you emceeing you know uh, steps um, a winter ball you know you're, you never um, hesitate to put your hand up for a you know auction um, a celebrity a celebrity auction no Charity, Charity auction. auction. Celebrity, that's all right. We can auction some celebrities. Um, but also um, Sunshine Coast Animal Refuge. So Scars is, you know, I know that's a really special place for both of our, uh, both of us, but, uh, you know, you've got a really special relationship with them. It is. Scars has always been, a, it's a non-for-profit local mm-hmm. organisation that have been running for over 40 years and uh, they rehome cats and dogs, which I think, you know, 
they both got special places in our hearts. So yeah. Amy and I are both avid dog yes. lovers. Yes. Um, and I think what they've created for the community on the Sunshine Coast, it being particularly non for profit, mm-hmm. it's genuinely done out of the love and hearts of volunteers and the community support. And over the last two years, we've been quite proud to be involved in the development of 20 new shelters it's built. It's incredible. Yeah, amazing. We've raised funds for those shelters. Yeah. I mean, who better to ask than to sponsor uh, dog pens <laughs> than a real estate agent? It's, a, it's just like selling houses, oh, but with right. a little bit of a guilt trip to convince you to oh. support such a good cause. Don't you want them all to be empty, though? That's the, oh, that's the hardest thing. And you do a beautiful, uh, there's a beautiful luncheon, I know, in Budrum that you support every um, year for them as well. Um, but yeah, look, Scars is a really special place. Um, I know, you know, gosh, the, over the years, the dogs that I've, that we've rescued from there and the you know, dogs that I've lost, and then we take the blankets and toys and everything there, they really are just at that grassroots level uh, position right next to the pound and, and really committing to save, you know, all of the animals that they can um, they also do some great work with our homeless community, so um, helping vet bills um, for those people that are doing it tough. They know that companionship is really important. Um, other charities that are special to you? We've always had a good support of charity mm. um, for the last 22 years, if not longer. Yeah. Um, we've supported the Budroom Ladies Bowls Club. Yeah, so that's right. That, yes, uh, that's beautiful. I love that. And, 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 you know, it, it is bowls yes. and there is still a segregation between the men's and women's okay. bowls. So, so um, you've we've always, always looked after the ladies. I love that. That's beautiful. Um, and I did want to also mention your Letters to Santa program is always something that always stands out to me that, um, you know, kiddies can drop off their letter to Santa and it miraculously gets to them. Yes, and I think, um, you know, I could both agree that Christmas is one of our favourite times of year. We love a celebration. And there's no doubt we both do it over the top. So <laughs> um, always growing up as a kid and even as an adult, Christmas is such a wonderful time of yeah. year. And to, to spread love um, and just that little bit of excitement, each year we do have our Santa box that we put out. Yeah. And children are able to write into Santa yeah. and we have responses sent back to their parents so it's, it's special. all those little I love things. That. It is, um, which brings me to our uh, last question. I don't want it to end. It's, we, we could literally talk forever, but you uh, you and I probably have our phones going nuts in the background. What's your favourite quote or saying? I would say that there's not much traffic on the extra mile. It doesn't take much to change a gear and just do that little bit more than everyone else. Yeah, look, what a beautiful closing sentence. So encapsulates who you are. Um, as you alluded to, you are a pioneer of our industry. You're absolutely so w- well respected and loved um, in our industry, but also as a friend. And I am so excited to see what the future has for us both. Thanks, Amy. Thank Always you. a pleasure. Oh, amazing. Thank you for listening to this episode of Beyond the Signboard. We trust you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it for you. If there are any topics you want covered in the future, make sure you reach out and let us know. Also, feedback and suggestions are appreciated almost as much as likes, shares and downloads. 